Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 11. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and download the workbook. Excel YouTube lovers 9 to 12. Hey, in number 11 here, someone asked, hey, I want to add up all the sales based on year and sales rep. Scroll over. There's a little table right here. Now I'm going to show, show you a new function of 2007. I'm going to show you how we used to do it in 2003. And then I'm going to show you a pivot table. All right, I'm going to highlight this whole range right here. And in that light colored cell, I'm going to create my formula. Hey, this is a new function. It's a function that sums on multiple criteria. Now there were ways to do it in earlier in Excel, which we'll look at later. This is for 2007 equals sum if, which used to be there. But now we type in s, s. And there it is, sum ifs, a new function. Now, it wants the sum range, and we want sales. So I'm going to scroll over, click at the top, Control Shift Down Arrow to get my current region, and then hit the F4 key to lock it, because I need to lock that range when I copy it everywhere. Now, the screen tip is played. It says now it wants the criteria range, and then the criteria for criteria number one. Remember, we have one criteria. Oh, yeah, years. Two criteria. Oh, yeah, sales rep, <coughs> comma. The criteria range one will do years. So I'm going to scroll over, get years, click at the top, control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it. Then comma, it wants the criteria. Oh, for this row, I want 2004. Now watch this. I want this cell reference to not be locked when I go down, have it be relative, and have it be locked when I copy it from this cell, Isaac to Kiko and Sue, et cetera. So I want it locked across the columns. So I'm going to hit the F4 one, two, three times. Dollar sign in front of the H means locked across the columns. No dollar sign in front of the number means not locked when I'm going down across the rows. Then I go comma. Oh, look, criteria range two. Oh, yeah, we need the sales rep. <clears throat> I click right there, Control Shift down arrow, F4, comma, and I got to get my criteria. That's Isaac. And then I hit F4, F4, because I want it locked going down, but not to the side. Close parentheses. Once I have my formula right there, I hit con hold control and then tap Enter to populate all the cells. Boom, just like that. That's how we do it here. Here's how we used to do it. And this is pretty cool. This is going to involve us the sum products, function, and arrays. Arrays. So you ready? Equals sum product. Some product, and it wants array two, three to multiply. Now, watch this. I'm going to simply go get my. There's three arrays we need to deal with. We need to deal with the sales because we're summing the sales, the years because that's going to have the criteria, and the sales rep. So I'm going to scroll over, get my um, sales. First, click on the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4 times, and in parentheses. Now I'm going to go over and get my years. Control Shift Down Arrow, F4. Move that screen tip. When I see that little uh, cursor, I can click and drag. Now I need to say equals and click on my 2004 and then F4, F4, F4 to lock it going this way but not down. That's a weird kind of formula right there, but the sum products function can handle it. It'll actually go through and say true, false, true, false, true, false. So this will be a bunch of ones and zeros. Close parentheses and then times, open parentheses, and then I got to go get my sales rep. I click on the top one, Control Shift Down O, F4 equals. And this one needs Isaac right there. And lock going down, but not side to side. Close parentheses. This one's also going to be a bunch of zeros and ones. So that's why these are called arrays. There's a bunch of numbers here. Every single one of the sales numbers are there. These are going to be zeros and ones. These are going to be zeros and ones. Only when these ones come out to be one, and it's one here in the parallel um, cell, it'll be one times one times whatever the value. The rest of them, if it's one here and zero here, that'll, that part will be equal to zero. And then zero times whatever value here is zero. So that's the logic behind that. This is using Boolean logic, true, false, ones and zeros. And then we close parentheses and Control Enter. Click in the last cell, hit F2. You can see that it actually worked when we got our cell references there. That's a pretty cool um, uh, function there and array formula. That's, there's other ways to do this. 
um, using Control Shift Enter, which is a well-known keyboard shortcut for entering array formulas, but the sum products gets around that in this situation. Hey, I'm going to scroll up. There's always cool notes. There's some cool notes about uh, things up here. Now, the last thing is we got to do a pivot table because that's the fastest way. Hey, why would we ever do it these ways? Well, sometimes you need a function. You just want the thing to update without having to refresh like you do in pivot tables, and people like functions. All right, let's see how to do it in a pivot table. It's a far uh, faster way. I'm going to click somewhere in my data. Remember, you can't use pivot tables unless you have field names at the top, records in rows, and no blanks anywhere except for surrounding the whole data block. Don't forget that. One cell somewhere. I'm going to go up to Insert, Pivot Table, and Pivot Table. In earlier versions, you go to the Data Menu, and then Pivot Table. I'm going to click right here. Hey, that's 2007. I'm going to click Escape. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut that works in 2007 and 2003 and opens up the three-step pivot table, Alt-DP. Alt DP. In earlier versions, you click uh, that and pivot table. That's what you want in the first step. And then you say, hey, where's your data? That's the second step. And here is the uh, new sheet. Where do you want it? I'm going to click cancel. And then I'm going to go up to insert, pivot table, pivot table, and compare that older method to this. Hey, look, there's the range. There's where it's coming from. We know it's coming from Excel. We could use external data here, but all three steps are combined into one. I'm going to click OK because I want it in a new worksheet. Now, watch this. By the way, uh, some of you have asked, hey, why, how in the world are you getting your 2007 pivot table to look just like earlier versions? Well, if you right click in your 2007 and go to pivot table options and then go to display, you can click this classic pivot table layout. No way. That's so cool. So if you like the older version, you can do that. That's how I'm able to show you both 2003 and 2007 methods. All right, here we go. We need um, years. So I'm going to click and drag in 2000. 2007, you drag it right there. In 2000 and uh, sorry, 2003, you drag it there to the row. In 2007, you drag it here, row labels. In 2003, you take sales rep and drag it up there, or you take it and drag it to the column area right here, sales rep. And then sales, you simply click and drag right there, or in 2000 and Three, you drag it there. And just like that, you have Alt F4. You've quickly, and by the way, you could do that with just a few clicks. And there it is. That's the fastest way to do that, a pivot table. By the way, what happened to my um, stuff there? If I click back in the, oh, I closed it. How would I open it back up? Probably under Options Field List right there. So Options Field List turns that on and off. All right, so there's how to do it with a pivot table. There's how to do it with the new wonderful sum ifs and then also the most amazing uh, make array formula simple kind of function sum product all right see you next uh excel fun